There's no doubt about it. I love flying and I love traveling, but I try to avoid it if I can due to the high carbon footprint of airline travel. Now, eventually, airlines and airports will use carbon neutral fuels and it's going to get better, but it's going to be a moment. One of the questions we might be asking nowadays about our carbon footprint is should we be using generative AI and chat GPT due to its impact? Hi, I'm Prof C, and I talk about generative AI and its impact on education, business, jobs, and society. And today I want to talk about the environmental impact of generative AI. Now, you may have seen some news articles about the water consumed by the data centers that train and operate ChatGPT. And I think we all just kind of jumped to the conclusion that ChatGPT's impact on the climate was huge and negative especially after seeing the enormous environmental toll that cryptocurrencies had due to their high energy consumption. However, there are two things to consider. First, what are we comparing AI's impact or carbon footprint to? It's not like the way that we produce writing and create images is a carbon-free activity. Second, unlike crypto, the environmental costs of training a large language model or an image generator can be amateurized over millions of users and billions of queries. A recent study examined the environmental impact of generative AI, specifically from the carbon footprint aspect, and the results were pretty surprising. Let's start with writing. The study looked at two popular AI systems, ChatGPT and another one called Bloom. For ChatGPT to write a page, it emitted only about one gram of CO2, and for the other, Bloom, less than one gram. Compare that to the energy consumption of a laptop or desktop computer for the amount of time it takes a human to produce the same amount of text, and the researchers found that the AI systems had a much lower carbon footprint. And if you also figure in the carbon footprint of the human that would be occupied doing the writing on the desktop or laptop, then it's even more dramatic. AI systems emitted over 1,000 times less CO2 than the average American writing a page. And even compared with the lowest emitting country, India, the AI was still over 100 times more efficient. The difference was similar when creating images. If you're an illustrator or graphic designer in the US, your work likely leads to about five kilograms of CO2 for every image. But Midjourney and Dolly 2 only admit a couple of grams per image for these AI systems over 2,000 times less amount of carbon generated by the human artists. Now, you might be thinking, okay, Prof C, but AI art can't replace human creativity, right? Well, that's true for a lot of important creative work out there, but for certain straightforward tasks like making an infographic, a social media banner, or even writing part of a blog post, AI can produce decent results with a lower environmental impact. Of course, AI also has downsides that need to be considered, like potentially displacing jobs. But strictly looking at carbon emissions, we can't assume that AI is any worse than our current mode of generating output. Now, there's a lot of confounding factors to consider here. Do we turn off our desktop computers and laptops when we're not writing? No, they still sit there and consume energy, right? So it's not like we're turning them off when we're using ChatGPT or after we're done using it. But I don't think that carbon footprint is really as big of an obstacle as we might think to the adoption of generative AI. Thanks for watching, and if you have made it to the end of this video, remember you are part of an elite club and you should probably subscribe. Thank you.